Hello everyone, I am Lachelle Weemy and I am so excited for you guys all to join me on our adventure here to show you how you can make a quantum leap in your business. I am so, so excited to nerd out a little bit with you today on some brain science and quantum physics, but I promise you that I will not make it above any of your ability to understand it. And maybe you might not even know more than me, but what I wanna do is bring you my enthusiasm and really truly help you to see the potential potential in what it is that you can do without the hustle, you guys, without having to consistently and constantly working so hard, keep doing the same things that you've always been doing without getting the results that you want. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes we, especially those of us that are driven right here inside of the Better Club, we want to see massive success. We want to see massive impact. We want to have a better life. We want to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. And honestly, sometimes we just want it like yesterday, right? We want it faster. We want it better. And some of us might even be in the situation where we've been in business for a long time, right? We've been doing all the things that they tell us to do. We've been putting in the time. We've been putting in the consistent effort, and we're not seeing the results that we want to by now. And we start to question, right? We start to question, what if I've been doing the wrong strategy? What if if I'm just not cut out for this. And that breaks my heart, guys, because I feel like sometimes we can just be up against a wall and we're not getting the breakthrough that we want to. And we know that if we can just get to the other side, everything's going to change, right? We can make the impact that we want to have. We want to you know, have the life that we want to, to, to live. We want to be able to give the things that we want to give. And if everything is seems like just on top of, you know, the, the or on the other side of that wall, right? So today, what we're going to do is we're going to go over some really amazing strategies to help you to be able to work smarter, not harder, to be able to help you take that quantum leap in your business to get you to where you want to go, but faster and with less effort. Can I get an amen? Like, does that sound amazing to you. If I haven't seen your name before, I want you to shout out and say hello. It is so, so welcome to, to so privileged to welcome you here inside the Better Club. We are a tribe of people who, as you can guess, want to be better, do better, and have better in life and in business. We are a tribe of people who recognize that they have a desire. We have a desire for better. There is something calling us for more. There's a bigger impact. There's a bigger life waiting for us. And we recognize that desire. We have that awareness. We also are recognizing that we are making the decision to do something about it, right? We're committed. You guys are here listening to this today because you are committed and are making the decision to learn and do the things that are required of you to level up your life. And I want to congratulate you for that same thing. And then we here in the Better Club are all about doing. We want to get into action. We want to implement the things that we're learning. But like I said today, I want you guys to work smarter, not harder, right? I want you to take that desire. I want you to let that flame burn. I want you to make the commitment to do the things that I'm going to mention to you during this, this time together. And I want you to do the things that you're learning today. So if you are tuning in here inside of the YouTube channel, I want to say, hey, if you guys are here inside of the Better Club Facebook group, I want to welcome you. You're going to get way better interaction if you're inside of the Facebook group. So if you guys are listening on YouTube, why don't you head on over to the Better Club on Facebook and we get a chance to talk to our um, each other a little bit more intimately. But regardless of how you're tuning in, I am so, so excited that you are here. Now, I want to start out today with a little story and then I'll get into, you know, who the heck am I and, and why are you listening to me in the first place, right? But I want to tell you a little bit of, um, about a, a fly. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to watch this fly and we're going to, to really put ourselves in the situation and let you have an aha moment for a moment. Okay. So I want you to imagine that you're seeing this fly and it's flying up against the window. The window pane is right there and it's trying so hard to get through that window out into the outside. It's stuck inside and it's going up against the window pane. Okay. And you see this poor little fly expending an enormous amount of energy in his tiny little life trying to get through that window. And its only system, its only way to go about this is to work harder, to work harder doing the same. How many of you guys can relate to that, right? You continue to show up, you do the things, people tell you, you know, just keep doing it consistently and it'll happen. And it's been five years, it's been nine years, you're not seeing the results and you're like, I just keep doing it, they keep telling me to do it, but it's not freaking working, okay? 
So this fly just is determined though, right? They're resilient and they're like, keep going, they're keep going. And they keep buttoning up against the windowsill or the window pane. What the fly doesn't realize is that just a few feet from where they are is a completely wide open door. And all it takes for that fly is to have a slight change of perspective, a slight change in the trajectory in which they are focusing to completely fly through the open door into the light that it's wanting. But instead, it continues to work harder and harder through literally raw effort and determination. And I got to just ask you guys, like how many of you have been waiting for someone to just take you and move your perspective just enough for you to be able to see that the door has been wide open? That you literally can fly right through it without more effort, without more pain, without more hustle. Literally just allowing yourself to take that small, small, tiny step makes a giant leap into where you want to go. How many of you guys are ready for that today? Because that's what we're going to talk about. Now, in order for me to allow for you to understand a little bit about what I'm talking about, it's going to have help if I take you back to the basics, okay? So what I want to do is to tell you exactly the fundamentals of what quantum physics and what the science that is literally not too good to be true, guys. Like this is truly legit fact-based science that I'm going to share with you today that's going to help change everything for you and for your business. But it all starts with recognizing that we are all energy, Okay, we are all energy, and I'm going to actually allow for this screen to get a little bit bigger for you guys to see it. Now, I know that as I sit here and talk to you, you all recognize that you are possibly sitting in a chair that's solid, right? I have a desk in front of me that I can knock on it. It's solid. My body is solid. It's made up of skin and bones and organs and and systems and and cells and tissues am i right i'm gonna have to require you to get the cobwebs out from your high school science days for a moment here but if you recall everything down to the tiniest cells in our body down to the tiny particles that make up the desk or the chair that i'm sitting in are things called atoms and quantum physics is really just a study of atoms and the way that atoms behave. That's it. That's fancy as it gets. Now, an atom is the smallest unit of matter. And scientists can actually, quantum physics can actually break down it into even smaller particles. But what an atom really is, is a nucleus and a proton and electrons that are literally rotating and orbiting it around the nucleus and the protons. And what makes something behave in a certain manner is literally comes down to the way that our electrons are rotating around the orbit, around the nucleus and the protons. It is the way that the electrons behave that makes something a human being or the desk that I'm knocking on. That's it. And so when you think about it, everything in our world Everything in our world, doesn't matter if it's the grass, it doesn't matter if it's the sun, it doesn't matter if it's my body, it doesn't matter if it's my dog. Everything is made up of the same building blocks, which is atoms with electrons orbiting around it. Now, if you think about that, that means that ourselves and everything around us is literally tiny little balls of energy. And we can measure energy by using the words frequency. And all frequency is, is telling us how fast or the speed in which the electrons are rotating around the atom. That's it. It's a scientific term to help us understand how the tiniest building blocks of matter are behaving and how fast they're vibrating around that orbit. Okay. Now we can take it a step further And how this brings into your business is actually looking at something called the energy frequency scale or energy emotional scale. Now, what I want you guys to do when you look at this is I want you to be able to recognize a couple of things, okay? The higher the frequency, the faster those electrons are rotating around, the faster the atom is vibrating, okay? The lower the frequency the slower 
those atoms are vibrating. Now, I also want you to notice that we can measure, the scientists can measure our emotions and the energy or the speed in which those electrons rotate based on the emotional state of our body. Because you guys, not only do my pancreas cells vibrate at a certain frequency, so do my thoughts. Because our brain is literally functioning in a way that one neuron fires with another neuron. It's electricity that goes to different parts of our brain. That's how we think. And so our thoughts also create and are made up of energy. So our emotions can give off energy. Now, one of the things that's really fascinating about this is I'm going to guess that you guys can completely think of somebody in your life or maybe even a situation that you personally have been part of where you felt really, really cruddy. And if you notice at the bottom of the scale is the emotion shame. The emotion shame only vibrates at 20 hertz. Very low. And so if I were to talk to you about being in grief or apathy or guilt or shame, do you notice how my body language actually changes? I'm feeling a lower, heavier energy around myself when I think of those emotions. When I think of peace and joy and love, notice that our scientists have determined that those emotions can actually produce energy at a much higher frequency level. For example, peace is at 600 hertz compared to the 20 hertz of shame. So it's vibrating a lot faster. It's vibrating a lot higher. That's where the high vibes comes from, that, that term that you often hear a lot, or what's your energy or how is she vibing, right? It literally is a scientific term that determines how fast our electrons are rotating around the nucleus. That's it. But our emotions can create a certain higher frequency level of energy. Now, I was able to find this really, really cool documentary on quantum physics. And if you're a nerd and like me and you want access to that, just let me know and I'll give it to you. But one of the things that they talked about was... Um, this analogy. Okay. So the, the scientist was at a fair and there was a fair game or a carnival game and there was a jug and he had a ball. Okay. And his, his um, goal was to take the tiny ball, throw it and knock over the jug. I'm sure you guys have all seen carnival games in similar fashion, right? He was given a whole bunch of these tiny little red balls and he threw and he threw and he threw. And no matter how many times he hit the jug, the jug never tipped over. Then he was given a blue ball. One toss of the blue ball and it completely knocked over the jug. One toss of one ball moved the jug versus a whole bunch of hits from the red balls. Why is that? Is because the blue ball actually had more energy packed into it than the red balls did, even though they were the same size. The same goes with our emotions. So if we're vibrating at the lower energy levels, like the red balls or the red in the shame, the guilt, the apathy, the grief, the fear, we're vibrating down here. And the energy in which we're emitting is much lower and therefore less effective. However, if we can vibrate at the higher levels, which is where the enlightenment, the peace, the joy, the love is vibrating, it's a much higher frequency and therefore it can knock over that jug in much more efficient and effective manner, which means that the same effort, the same size balls can do much more if it's a blue ball versus a red ball. And so our goal when it comes to quantum physics and how we can get our business to be transformed, a quantum leap in our business and work more effectively and efficiently is to use the blue ball versus the red ball. When we can allow our emotions to get us to where we need to be to allow ourselves and our bodies and our thoughts to vibrate at the higher levels of frequency in the blue range, we're actually going to be able to accomplish more with the same amount. So one of the things that we can do is we can totally utilize the fact that we have the control over our emotions. Now, our brains work in a manner that allows for our thoughts to create our emotions. Our emotions then create our actions and our actions create our result. It all starts with our thought. 
So if I tell you right now to think of something that makes you really sad, I'm going to guess that that is something that you can do. Do you notice how your energy shifts? All of a sudden, I feel a lot heavier, more tired, just kind of blah when I think of something sad. When I think of something happy, which is what I want you guys to do just right now, notice how everything seems lighter. I feel like I can accomplish so much more. I feel like I have more energy. Our thoughts create our emotions. And so you guys are not subject to anything. You actually have the control over allowing yourself to think and therefore feel in a way that allows you to be more efficient and effective on a daily basis. How amazing is that, that you actually have the control, you have the power to bring yourself into the state. So one of the ways that we can allow ourselves to take advantage of the blue ball and not the red ball is to think of something that's going to allow for us to get our emotional levels up to the point that it's producing more frequency, more hertz of energy. The other thing that it's really, really important that we do is also consider ways in which our energy is being blocked. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's going to feel really, really vulnerable, but you guys are my friends. You're here to learn alongside of me today. And so I'm going to open up and I'm going to tell you a little bit of my story. So I grew up in a really, really small, tiny town. I wasn't the cute kid. I certainly wasn't the rich kid. We had very, very little money. I didn't have the cool clothes. I didn't, I didn't have what it takes to be somebody that was easily accepted. And I learned very early on that it was important for me to dilute myself down, to, to drown myself out and the gifting that I was given in order to try to be accepted and fit in. I needed to try to be like someone else in order to be accepted. I also came from a household where my mom had a very similar story. And she had a lot of self-talk playing in her head that told her that she wasn't good enough. I remember going to family outings where she felt like my dad's family was better than what we were because they had better jobs. My dad was a farmer. They had fancy businesses. They had more money. They had better cars. And she would literally come to Christmas and she would sit in the corner and barely talk to anyone because she felt inferior. Now, as a little kid, our subconscious is actually being programmed by the influences of people around us. Her vibration, her energy was down here. And I picked that up and it allowed for my subconscious programming to pick up that worldview. And that's literally how I thought. And so I grew up stuffing emotions down into me that allowed to continue to build upon that I'm not good enough, that I'm not worthy. And what happens with our brain, and I don't want to get into this too much, but what happens with our brain is that our brain naturally wants to create an outside world that matches our inside world. And much of our inside world and the programming that we have is created before we're even seven years old. Before our brain has the ability to accept or reject, it simply accepts without the maturity and the context to be able to determine that that doesn't quite seem right that I actually am good enough, that I actually am worthy, that they're not better than me. But that is the contract, context and, and, and contract in my brain that I made. And so everything in my outside world is going to start matching what my inside world wants it to match. And so I don't allow myself to think in peace and love and joy and acceptance. My norm is the apathy, the guilt, the shame, the fear. And I have emotions that have not been allowed to probably be expressed. Now, fast forward, I go on and I am essentially overcompensating. I'm gonna show you guys proof of that in a moment, but I'm overcompensating. I get out of high school and I start to recognize that nobody in college knows who I am and I have a chance to start all over. And I allow myself to do that and I start to excel but I also noticed that there were certain things that I would hit up against little roadblocks that didn't allow, allow for me to go forward because of the programming, the emotions that I could not break through. For example, one of the things that I had, the programming that I had is that I had to perform in order to be accepted. I had to earn love and acceptance. And I 
would slowly take myself out of certain classes. Be I would I would sign up and then I would withdraw before they started because I thought, well, maybe that would ruin my 4.0 grade point average. And I wouldn't be able to earn that I was good enough. So even though I was making a lot of progress, I was still finding myself in self-sabotaging behavior. And nobody chooses to, to sabotage your success. But what happens is we have emotions that are blocking that energy flow. So I went on to school. I got, you know, my degree. I ended up getting my bachelor's, my master's, then, then my doctorate in anesthesia. I love brain science. I love nerding out. I became a professor. I love teaching. I literally thought I had my dream job. But I would still find that I would come up against certain blocks of unworthiness and self-sabotage because I always felt like I was an imposter, that I was sitting at the wrong table, that I had to prove my worth, which meant more degrees, which meant more committees, which meant more research papers in order to prove to myself that I was worthy. That also led me on a personal development journey where I started to learn things like coaching. I got my doctorate degree and I, and I specialized in coaching and I was able to, to learn all of these amazing tools to help me. But the thing is, you guys, is that that also then led to more of the shame. Remember shame is at the bottom lowest vibration. So what would happen was I would have a, a rough day. I've had the unstuck podcast now for a couple of years. And I, during 2020, during the pandemic, and I was an anesthesia provider, it was awful. I was super stressed out. I wasn't sleeping well. Work was really awful. And it was just scary being a mom in the pandemic and in healthcare during that time. And so I felt really, really stuck. But how could I, the host of the unstuck podcast, feel stuck? And so I was literally shaming myself for having these feelings. I was shaming myself for thinking, you know, Lachelle, you know, all the tools, like you should be better than this. You shouldn't feel this. And what I didn't realize at the time, guys, is that when we don't allow for ourselves to express certain emotions and we try to block them off from actually being and, and, and going through us and allowing the energy to come through us, I was actually letting it get stuck stuck inside of my body, stuck inside of my, my, my subconscious, stuck in the way that was not allowing energy to actually flow in a proper way throughout my body. And that explained why I would, you know, know what I needed to do in my business. When I started my business, I'm very coachable. And I would get myself to a point where, you know, I was successful. I, I got to the top 2% of my network marketing business within the first year. Within the first six months, I was making enough money to drop my time at the hospital as a nurse anesthetist by a day a week. Like I was successful, but for some reason, I couldn't get past a certain stage. I couldn't get past a certain title. I couldn't get past a certain number of followers. Why was that? I had blocks. I had unresolved energy blocks that I didn't even realize that I was carrying. And it wasn't until I started to recognize that I had these blocks that I started to go down the path of learning how to break through them. I was the fly, you guys, that had been consist consistently going up against the window pane, trying to get through by working harder, adding more degrees, learning new things, reading new books, doing the things that my coaches told me to do, doing the things that my upline told me to do, but I wasn't getting there. I also was recognizing that there were certain things that they were telling me to do, but I couldn't get myself to do it. Picking up the phone felt like it weighed a million pounds. Why was that? And that led me to the discovery that I'm talking with you guys today. That led me to the ability for me to take that tiny shift in perspective and to recognize that there is an open door that I can fly out of that I don't have to continue to pound on the windowsill hoping that I'm going to break through it, that I could just change the slight angle of what I'm doing and allow those blocks to completely fade away. And that's what we're going to do today, guys. We're going to go over some of my most important tips and tricks to get you to not only break through the blocks, but also rise to the level of frequency that you need to, to work more effectively effectively and efficiently. Are you guys ready? All right, let's do this. Okay. So now here comes the vulnerability piece. Oh, here's a warning. Okay. So 
this is a report that I have and I am going to walk you through it. So I was able to be introduced to this amazing technology that literally takes 10 seconds of my voice and it helps to analyze that 10 second voice clip and determine what are the three emotions that I'm currently overcompensating for. And get this, the one emotion that I have been stuffing down and repressing for greater than two years. That my friends was my block. And so when I submitted my voice message, my voice clip into the algorithm, it gave me my results. Now, a little sidebar, why in the heck can it even do that? I'm going to tell you that if you can tell that I am super excited about talking about this, my voice can tell you that you feel it even if you don't see me. But if I'm having a really bad day, like a really bad day, you can tell by my voice. My voice is lower. It's slower. It doesn't have the energy, right? Our voice carries our emotions that can be expressed through our vocal cords. How freaking amazing is that? So anyway, I have this technology. I spe speak into it for 10 seconds. It comes up this gigantic algorithm and spits out the emotions that I am overcompensating for and the one that I have been repressing. This, my friends, is what it told me, that I have this repressed emotion that I have not allowed myself to properly deal with that has been holding me back my whole life, the unacknowledged versus self-validated. Now, this doesn't mean that I'm at one extreme or the other. What it means is that there's a block in between the two of them. So let me give you um, an example. Once I can get this to be in balance, to be in harmony with the way that that energy is supposed to flow, when I can allow that trapped emotion to break free, I am going to be able to feel secure in my own self-worth. I'm going to be able to recognize my own uniqueness, my talents, my attributes. I'm going to be able to experience more self-esteem, self-confidence, better memory, better joy in life. How amazing would that feel? But when I'm out of balance, when I'm out of sync, these are the things that come up. The feeling unacknowledged, the feeling of this personal sense of self-worth that might be based on the opinions of others. Any people pleasers out there? That has been me my whole freaking life. I might feel undervalued or judged by others. Hello. Those were the things that were keeping me from picking up the phone. Those were the things that were keeping me from talking to the people on my chicken list. Those were the things that were preventing me from, from posting on social media because I was scared of being, being judged or being failing in front of other people or being talked about by other people. I might have feelings that stem from childhood experiences of criticism, teasing, punishment, abuse, or bullying. I have so many stories, you guys, that I could share with you that, that still bring up tears in my eyes today. Those things, those things were never allowed for me to fully express and release and they're still there and they're still blocking the energy. They're blocking my ability to get myself fully to the top, to fully appreciate the blue ball that I can use to efficiently and effectively get my business to where I want it to go. I might also experience um, resulting behaviors of low self-esteem, lack of self-trust, depression, poor memory, and self-judgment. And I might be overly concerned about safety, security, and finances. Not wanting to take the leap, not wanting to take the risk, not wanting to burn the ships because I know that's the one thing that's going to get me to where I want to go. I'm too scared. Why? Because I have all of these still that are blocking me. And what happens is, is that when we have trapped emotions, things like stress, fear of failure, and fear of abandonment, which ultimately is oftentimes one of our root wounds fear of unworthiness or fear of not being loved is at the core of what it is that holds us back. And when we butt up against that, we completely shut down our logic, our rationality, all the things that we've learned completely go out the window. And we resort back to these previous things because the block is still there. And so every time I experience this, it makes the problem worse. Now, 
the thing is, is that this program actually allowed for me to be able to, to be able to go and adjust the things, um, free the blockages. And there are so many cool techniques that I have that I, that I use on my coaching clients, such as muscle testing, um, the emotion code and this, this algorithm. And the algorithm has actually gives me a prescription of music that balances those emotions to allow for my own body to release those emotions. How cool is that? But if you don't have a machine like that, something else that you can do is when you feel your emotions that you don't necessarily want to feel, we cannot place judgment on those emotions, guys, okay? We cannot say, oh, I feel stuck and I, I'm crappy and weak um, because I feel stuck and I shouldn't feel that way. And now we've literally catapulted ourselves down to the shame. We've literally taken all of the, the great work that we've done and we brought ourselves down to the, to the level of shame. And now we have to crawl our way back up. We don't want that. And so what we can do is we can allow for ourselves to witness our emotions. Witness them. Huh, isn't that interesting? I feel really stuck right now. Notice that there's no judgment around it. It just is. I'm an observer of my emotions. I'm a witness to them. And when I can embrace my emotions with love, and allow for my emotions to be seen as a blessing, as a clue to something that I need to work on. Maybe I have some unforgiveness that I have to work on. Maybe it's unforgiveness with myself. Maybe it's unforgiveness with somebody else. Maybe it's something that I need to, to learn. Maybe it's something I need to acknowledge. And I can allow that emotion to be a clue, to be a key for the next level of advancement. And I can lovingly thank that emotion for showing up and allowing for myself to lovingly accept it and witness to it. Isn't that interesting that I feel really angry right now? Why do I feel angry? And I can allow myself to fully feel that because God gave us all of our emotions on purpose. We are a image of him and he has all of the emotions. So why do we feel that there's something wrong with us if we feel anger or fear? They're there to allow us to help give us clues. But the secret, the quantum secret, the quantum leap secret is that we allow ourselves to witness the emotions, to embrace it with love and to release it. And that allowing to embrace it with love and releasing it allows us to not stay stuck in the fear, in the grief, in the anger. And allowing to witness it and embrace it with love allows us to take ourselves to the top of the scale. That's what we want, guys. We want to try and sit as much up at the top as we possibly can. But judging ourselves for the way that we feel is only going to allow for those blocks to remain there and allow for those blocks to get bigger. And when we have blocks that are keeping our energy from flowing throughout our body the way that it's meant to flow, then we are never going to reach the frequency level of the, the way that we need to be in order to live the quantum leap life. So tell me, are you ready? Are you ready to let go of those emotions? Are you ready to allow yourself to just witness them in love? Are you ready to allow yourself to feel the more of the enlightenment, the peace, the joy, the abundance that you have just by literally flying through the open door? I'm ready. Are you guys ready? So I'm going to give you some of my best tips to do that in addition to what I just shared with you. Okay. Now. When I think about um, the, the witnessing of our emotions and, and release those emotions in love, the next thing I think about is really and honestly and consciously shifting our emotions, shifting our energy. Again, our thoughts create our emotions. Our emotions don't rule us, guys. Our thoughts create our emotions, just like I just told you, that if you think about something that is 
you know, sad. And this is something too, I wanted to bring up because remember how I talked about some of our emotions that we haven't properly released are being trapped in our bodies. I'm going to give you a quick, um, visualization of that. Okay. So when I ask you right now to think of something that makes you sad, I'm going to have you do that for the next five seconds here. Okay. Where in your body do you feel that? Now I feel it in my gut. Sometimes if I think of something different, I feel it in my chest. I might feel it in my throat. Sometimes I feel it in the back of my shoulders, like I'm carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders. Our body literally holds on to those trapped emotions. Those trapped emotions prevent the energy from flowing where it's supposed to. And those trapped emotions also lead to our body not functioning the way that it's meant to function, which is why oftentimes you're tired. You know that you need to work on your business because the kids go to sleep, but you're too tired and you just want to go to bed. You, you know that you need to maybe wake up a half hour earlier and get your business activity done before your day starts so that you don't not do it and you're just too tired. It's because those blocked emotions are contributing to an improper flow of energy throughout your body. And that is why your body is not performing at its best. Now, there's other things that contribute to that, but our emotions are one of the biggest ones. In fact, scientists think that between 80 and 85, our diseases are actually stemmed from emotion. There's an emotional component. Think of stress, anxiety. How often do those lead to heart issues, right? Chronic anxiety leads to diabetes. Now, when you think of that, I want you to recall that if you have emotions that come up, if you're triggered, and what does trigger mean? Trigger means that you are experiencing a very heightened level of emotion for something that somebody else might think is benign. Okay. So I'm going to give you an example. Um, let's just say that I um, am talking to my husband, we're putting away laundry and he makes a comment about, oh my gosh, like move all of your shoes. Like you have so many shoes. Like, why do you need so many shoes? Okay. Somebody else would be like, laugh that off. Like, you're right. I totally do. Like, I only have two feet. Like, why do I need so many shoes? I'm such a shoe girl, by the way. Let me know if you are too. But, you know, that that could easily be something that's completely laughed off. Well, what if I have this um, intense, like, rage? Like, what are you saying? That I, I don't, can't spend the money the way I want to? All of a sudden, that tiny little comment of, hey, you know, gosh, move your shoes, led to this huge emotional outburst. Now, chances are, guys, that him making that comment wasn't really all that offensive, but it it brought up something inside of me that made me feel like I wasn't important enough to make decisions for my own finances, that I am being controlled or that I am not good enough to make those decisions or I'm not good enough to have nice things or I'm not good enough to have things. Notice how there's some deep rooted issues within me that was triggered by that one thing. If you're finding that you're being triggered by something that perhaps somebody else might not have even thought twice of, there is some work to be done. Okay. If you're also finding that there are certain things, like you'll notice patterns where you'll get to a certain point in your business and then you just like won't or can't get past the next level. Like you might have patterns that you're doing that are sabotaging your success because you get to a certain point and you might actually fear that success. You might fear that your friends are going to not be your friends anymore. You might fear that money's going to change you because you have a money mindset story. You might fear something that, that is going to prevent you from taking that next step. Those are emotions that are being blocked inside of you that we have to learn to release. And that allows you to raise your energy as well. Okay. So I want you to think about that in terms of, hmm, what patterns am I seeing? Where am I being triggered? What am I seeing that I, I noticed that I just can't get myself to do? Or I do it for a little while and then I completely stop. Um, I'm consistent on social media for a while, but then I get bad, I get off my, my habits and then I don't do anything. Or, you know, I talk, I get a no and, um, or somebody ignores me and then I stop sending messages and I just spiral down from that. Like I'm on a roll and then I get a no or an ignore and then I just spiral down. What are some patterns? What are some behaviors that you could start noticing that are going to clue you in on where you might have some of those energy blocks? Okay. Now, 
going back to the way that our thoughts create our emotions, I want you to start thinking about what you would love to have in your life. What would you love to experience? What are your desires? Now, oftentimes we only go after what we think we can accomplish, what we believe we are capable of. But we don't actually go after what we desire. So I want you to take a moment and you can do it right now or you can do it after this is finished. This is your homework. I want you to sit and I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about who would you love to be if you could be anything? And when I say be, I want it like a being of, of who am I becoming? Who, who am I? I'm a confident person. I have un wavering self-worth. I'm generous. I am, I don't let people get the best of me. I am kind. Who do I want to be? I'm, I'm consistent with my business. I, what are the characteristics of the person that you want to be? What does that look like to you? If, if, if it was as ideal state, what would you love to do? And there's nothing that could hold you back. What would you desire to do? That could be vocationally. It could be traveling the world. It could be speaking. It could be doing things with your kids whenever you want to. What would that feel like to do what you want to do? And then lastly, what would you love to have? Be, do, have. What would you love to have? Not what you believe you can have. I want you to think about from your deepest desires, because here's the deal, God. Guys, God gives us our desires of our heart. If we ask him, he will put his will into our hearts. And those desires are nothing to be ashamed of. If you're desiring to have more because you know that you can make a bigger impact in the world, those are from him. Because here's the deal, guys. And this is something that, I mean, I could talk for hours about all of the ways that we can sabotage ourselves. But oftentimes we worry that we only can have what God's will is for us and not our own will. But here's the deal. He gives us our will if we ask for it. And he will give us what we ask when it betters all humankind. So if you becoming extraordinarily wealthy and you start orphanages or nonprofits or you give away or you do the things to make humankind better, he wants that for all of us. Those are his desires that he's placed in your heart. So do not let yourself hold back. But energetically, what happens is when we can take ourselves and we can, you know, think about what we want to be, what we want to do, what we want to have, we could have anything and everything we could possibly imagine for ourselves. And we can feel what that would feel like. And we can think about who we would be impacting if that were to happen. When we do that, we literally raise our energy and it becomes an energetic match to that desire. Because I promise you that the things that you're desiring, guys, are, are up here. And if you're playing around in the red and your desires are up here in the blue, you're not going to be able to get that. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. All right. So let's just say that you walk into a, a party and you, you know, haven't talked to anybody yet, but you walk in. And you get this sense that like, it's just really tense and it feels really, really heavy. And it feels like, you know, nobody said anything. You haven't said anything. You, you haven't heard anything, but it just, it feels really, really heavy. It feels really icky and you can't wait to get the heck out of there. Have you guys ever been in a situation like that? Now I want you to think about a place that you've been and you walk in and everybody has a smile on their face. Everybody seems happy. It feels like electricity. It feels like the room is on fire. It feels like you just, you can't get enough of it. Like you want to go in, like you, you want to walk in and you don't want to leave. How does that feel? You are being drawn into that place. The one that didn't feel good, you were being repelled from that place. When you allow for yourself to energetically be in alignment with your desires, you are literally telling yourself that th this is a match. This is where I want to be. I can't get enough of this. I want to go in and I never want to leave. That is what I'm talking about.
when we can become an energetic match, our outside world matches our inside world. And we start to be, do, and have the things that are consistent with that energy. And I know that sounds like too good to be true, but for real, when you align with that energy of your true desires, you will start showing up differently. People will start popping into your life that you're like, holy crap, how did that happen? Opportunities will start presenting to themse themselves to you because you are in the plane of energy to allow yourself to accept that. It's almost like you have to be in this in the same zip code in order for it to be handed to you. But if you're down here, they can't hand it to you. You have to be up in the same zip code. You have to be up in the same energetic plane. So if you want these things, you have to bring yourself up there. What does that look like? That little things like really getting clear on what you want and living in that space as if it already happened. When we can be, it allows for ourselves to, to attract that. One of the things that I want to point out when you look at this emotional scale, look at where desire is. Desire is way down on right on top of fear and underneath anger. Okay. This is important. So I want you to listen to this. If I am in desire mode of what I want, but I don't have, it's energetically down here. Oh, I would love to have that. I'm going to try to make that happen. Oh, wouldn't that be nice, right? Versus I am so happy and grateful now that this is already happening. And we can literally tell our brain that it's already there, that we're just like in waiting for it to present itself. Like we just expect it to happen. We are in joy. We are in peace knowing that it's on its way to us, that we we love our lives so much. And we look for ways in our life that we're doing things that we love. And that will allow us to have more of those things present in themselves into us, into our lives. When I started to recognize how much I love floating in the pool and I allowed myself to embrace the fact that this is so amazing, it's so peaceful, I get to feel the sun, I get to feel just the peace, I get to pray and I get to connect with God in that way, I started to be able to literally find myself in more opportunities because I was able to work smarter, not harder and free up more time to do the things that I loved opportunities presented themselves to me because I was putting myself into the place where I was doing what I loved and I was grateful for it and loving it and, and expecting that I would have more of it. Okay. So live as if it's already happened. It's not enough to just want it. You have to imagine that it's already here. Okay. Now, the other thing that I would love for you guys to start doing is to surround yourself with the people and the energy that elevates you, okay? Now, people is pretty pretty obvious, right? Like, I'm sure that you guys all have people in your life that you can think of like that, that completely drain you, right? You can think about them and you're just like, wah, wah, Debbie Downer, like they just bring you down like Eeyore, right? And you don't necessarily want to be around those people. They just suck the energy right out of you, right? Or you have people that just lift you up. They make you want to be a better version of yourselves in a loving, encouraging way, right? They're like the tiggers. They're the ones that that make us just want to live life to the fullest. They're the ones who, who make us just want to, to level up. Surrounding yourselves with the people that are going to take you up there are going to help. If you are finding that the five people that you surround yourself with the most often are the Eeyores, then you are going to find yourself energetically really struggling to get up. Okay? So, so surround yourself with people who are where you want to be and to help bring out the best and are vibrating at that higher frequency of love, joy, acceptance, peace. When you hang out with people who complain all the time, who are, you know, in fear all the time, who, who just are down here, that's what you're going to get. And so surrounding yourself with that, you also want to make sure that you are experiencing things in your environment. Like I mentioned with the pool, putting yourself into situations that bring you joy, spending time with my kids, spending time in nature, spending time, you know, doing the things that I love to do. 
all help me raise that vibration level. That also includes things that you're doing for your job. Are you finding that you are loving to get creative, right? But yet you, you know, have this minutia of all these other things. Make sure that you're building in ways to get creative during your day so that you can find yourself in that high level of vibration of doing things that you love to do. It also includes what are we listening to on the radio? What are we watching on TV? What are we reading? Exposing yourself to really heavy, bad vibration things day in and day out is going to do something different than putting in high vibration, high frequency, love, peace, joy things versus angry things, right? So if I'm like getting, you know, my my 90s childhood ACDC Metallica stuff, you know, out, like that's going to put me down here, right? But if I put in my worship music, like I am up here almost like that. So surrounding yourself with an environment that allows you to raise your vibrations is also going to help your business. Finding things that you love to do, finding people that you love to be around. And if you don't have those things, creating them, you are in charge of your life, guys. You have the choice. You have the power to make that happen. Okay. The other thing that I think really, really helps, especially when I'm looking at this, is getting in gratitude. Now, one of the things that I learned from a book called The Happiness, Happiness Advantage by Sean Agor was that it is really hard to be angry and stressed and grateful at the same time. So one of the things that we do at our dinner table is when somebody is having a bad day, we say, okay, I want you to think of three things that you're grateful for. And immediately it shifts our energy because gratitude and appreciation is at the very top of the emotion vibration code and scale. It's up with love, peace, and joy, appreciation. So when you're feeling in a funk, if you can simply just think of things that you're grateful for and find the gifts in things, it's going to help you to raise. Now, you also have to recognize that oftentimes it's really hard for us to take ourselves from the very, very bottom all the way to the top. Now, gratitude does a, do a pretty good job with that, but I also want you guys to recognize that it's totally fine if you are down here and you just get yourself up one more. So if you are like in shame, but you can get yourself up to anger, anger still feels bad. Remember, we're not judging ourselves, right? But you can get yourself up on the, it's actually vibrating the higher frequency. So if you can even move yourself up, and bring yourself up to the next level, that's going to allow you to get into a higher level and again, be able to pick up the blue ball and do with it what you can more efficiently and effectively. All right. Second to the last one is all about motion. Our motion actually can set up our emotion. So if you're feeling in a funk, if you're feeling unmotivated, if you feel like, uh, I don't want to work on my business today, do something physical, get up and jump up and down, put on some music and start dancing, laugh and get in a good belly laugh in, or even just using your body language in a different way is going to get you into motion. Motion precedes emotion. So if you're in a funk, just literally start moving your body and it will shift your energy vibration up a notch, which is really powerful. And the very last one, the very last one that I want to mention before we wrap up our time together is that I want you to assume the energy that things are working out for you and not to you, that things are working out for your advantage always. So even if you are in the space right now where you're like, Lachelle, I freaking feel like I am the fly and I've been bouncing constantly, working harder, working harder, working harder determination, resilience, grit against that window pane, and it's not going anywhere. And I thought that I'd be further along in my business by now. I want you to just take this and I want you to allow my belief in you to be your belief in you for a moment. And I want you to choose the attitude that everything is working out for my good. The timeline is exactly the where I'm supposed to be up until now. That Everything that I've learned, the people I've met, the lessons I've taken in are working for me. And that I have to trust the higher plan. And that moving towards this high level vibration is a non-negotiable. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what I mean by that, okay? If, if you decide that 
let me see, how can I say this? Um, okay, it's not an option. If I say that being successful in my company is not an option, where does that take my energy level? Immediately drops down, right? Um, being able to quit my full-time job in order to work on my business full-time is not an option for me. Whoosh, down energetically. Um, meeting the right people and, and taking my business to the seven-figure level is not an option for me. Again, way down here. Like, I feel like I want to just curl up into a ball and start crying right now. Like, that's how energy takes you, right? But if I allow you to shift that energy and say, quitting is not an option. Staying in this job until I am 65 is not an option. Not making it to the top is not an option. That allows me to take my energy level up and say, all right, let's do this. What do I need to do? Who do I need to talk to? What do I need to, you know, what do I need to execute today? This not working is not an option. I don't have another option. This is it. Like I'm choosing this. Everything is working out for me. You have to take that belief in yourself. You have to trust the process and you have to remember because the moment that you start to doubt yourself is when you're taking that energy down. You have the power, you guys, you have the power within you to do this. You have the power to choose your thought. You have the power to choose your circle. You have the power to choose to find things in your day that bring you joy. You have the power within you to choose that you are going to see this through, that quitting is not an option, that you know and trust that this is your path and you will see it to the top. All of those things rise our, our frequency. It brings us to the top. It brings us to the place where we're allowing those electrons to spin even higher, to be able to attract the people in our life that also spin that high. The people that are really successful guys are vibrating at a really high frequency. Those are the people that are going to get you to where you want to go. If you're vibrating down here, that isn't going to happen. What are you doing to put the power back into your hands? What are you doing? So I am going to take you to one of my favorite little, um, let's see, I got to make sure it's working. Okay, the video is not going to play, but I'm going to tell you what this picture is, um, okay? So those of you guys who have not seen Finding Nemo for a while or have maybe just never seen it, I'm going to give you a little context, okay? So in the movie Finding Nemo, we have Nemo that um, is a little fish, a little clownfish that was basically snatched up and brought into a dentist's office fish bowl in Sydney, Australia, Okay. Now his dad, Marlon, needs to find him. And he literally is like trying to get to his son. And they they came up with a clue. They they figured out where the address was. It was Sydney, Sydney, Australia. Okay. He comes across this little fish, Dory, and the two of them are on an adventure to go find Nemo. Okay. Now, one of the biggest phrases in the movie Finding Nemo is Dory saying, just keep swimming, just keep swimming. And I think so oftentimes, guys, in our business, that's what we keep telling ourselves. Like, don't give up. You got this. Keep going. Just keep swimming. And I totally agree with that. We have to keep swimming. We have to have inspired action. Do not expect to sit on your couch, guys, and let all the things that I've taught you tonight just magically appear. You have to get into action. But if, if Marlon and Dory had been just keep swimming the entire time, they would never have gotten to Sydney. What happened was a scene where they come up to meet a, a turtle named Crush, and he teaches them about the EAC, which is a current that takes them literally like a whoosh of water, and it catapults them into Sydney. Now, they could have just kept swimming and it would have maybe gotten them there, but they would have been awfully tired. They were like the, the 
the fly that just keeps bouncing against that wall or that 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 window um, pane. But they were open enough to allow for someone to guide them, in this case, crush the turtle, and show them the way to get into the EAC and catapult them to their destination faster without the need to swim. They literally would just arrived. They got into the current and the current took them there. Now, I believe, I believe that everything that I have just taught you tonight is going to allow for you to get into the EAC. We're going to need to keep swimming, my friends, but it is time that we allow for something to get us there faster, more efficiently, more effective. I want you to be able to pick up little Culver's ad apparently, right? Pick up the blue ball. And I want you to know that your energy and your effort is going to get you exactly where you need it to go because you're there. You're there. It's time, friends, to get into the EC. So if you're ready and you are just like, all right, Lachelle, like I'm ready for a quantum breakthrough. This is something that I am more than happy to offer for you guys today. So that technology that I told you about with the 10 second voice clip, I'm going to offer it to you as my, like my gift to you. And it's going to give you a report that will tell you your emotions that are being overexpressed. And it's also going to tell you exactly what emotion you've been repressing. And it's going to give you a prescription of music that you listen to that allows for that energy to slowly shift and allow those emotions that are been trapped to break through. That was a game changer for me. I was able to break through that block that I've been having on confidence and self-worth all those years and listening to my music every day and allowing this technology to, to personally deliver what I need to help me bring myself back into balance without even having to do anything. Like I literally put it in while I'm working and it does its job has allowed me to make a quantum leap in my business. And I want to help you make a quantum leap in yours. And so all you need to do is use this QR code. It's going to take you to a form. The form is going to ask you for for a few couple of things. And it's really just so that I can create a digital profile for you in order for the algorithm to read everything that needs to read. So make sure that you fill out the exact form and then I will send you the results and give you opportunities for me personally to be able to show you exactly what they mean in order for you to take your business to the next level. It is time, you guys, that we get into the EAC. It is time that we switch our angles just a little bit and fly, fly through that door. Enough banging our heads against the window. It's time, you guys, that we catapult ourselves to where we need to go. And you can ask yourself, do I want to just stay and keep swimming, keep swimming, keep banging up against that window? Or am I ready for a quantum leap? Now, one of the things that I do for my coaching clients is I teach them all of the brain science and they get a chance to access this technology as often as they want to, like they have free reign with it. And I would love for you guys to just experience it for once because it is going to change everything for you if you let it. If you are ready to stop swimming and stop pushing against the glass and you are ready to get into the EAC, you're ready to literally fly through that window, I want to see you on the other side. I hope you guys all had the most amazing times with me. I hope that I wasn't able to, to geek out too much about science. And I hope that I was able to bring it to a level that you can completely understand that you can buy into. Let's vibe. Hi guys. Let's get us to a place where we are using our blue balls to be able to catapult ourselves to the next level. All right. If you have any questions, let me know. And I will see you. I will see you on the other side. Everybody, thanks so much for joining me and I will be cheering you on.